Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo group. In this video I want to look at working with fonts not necessarily about how you alter text once you've typed something but just about getting the fonts, installing the fonts and sort of what you can do with the fonts once you've got them. Now this applies both to Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer and should apply equally to Mac versions and PC versions. Um, I don't own a Mac so I can't 100% say that everything will work the same but I will assume that they do um, because I think fonts are pretty much standard across most computer formats. So I'm going to start off in Affinity Photo and then move over to Designer a little bit later. So the first thing I want to look at is getting a font. Now I'm going to work with this picture here which I got from pixabay.com of a cowboy. So I'm looking for a font that is sort of cowboy western orientated. So I'm going to come to this website here, which is defont.com. I will add a link to this into the description for this video. And as far as I know, they're pretty much all free to download. You can just click on the download button and you can donate to the author of the font, but basically it's free for personal use. Some of them may don't ask for donations, but quite a few of them do. And up here we have a search. So I'm going to search for Western. And there's quite a few sort of Western style fonts. And there's even some that are drawings rather than fonts. But I'm going to use this first one, which is by James L. Do yeah, I'm not sorry, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that one. Um it doesn't actually say it's free to use, which is probably a problem. I must admit I hadn't noticed that before. Um but I'll I would I have downloaded this one already, so I will use this one. And nearly all these files, when they download, they will download as a zip file. You just have to extract that file. And then once you have the file extracted, you have something like this, which is a true type font file. And there may be, I think there's open font as well. Now, I, I really don't know how you install fonts on a Mac. You'd have to look that up, but on a PC, especially with Windows 10, you can just right click it and then click on install and then it will, once it's done, that should be that installed. So if I come to the text, um, sorry, the text options in Affinity Photo, and I open up the font menu here. Now this is a fairly new variation. Um, I think I'm using version 1.6.1 something or other. I think they installed this new font browser, I think in version 1.5. Um, and it gives you a much bigger window to see the font. And you have the name of the font all in alphabetical order. Next to it you have the different types of variant fonts within this particular, so there's only one variation here, whereas there are two variations, and if I drop this little drop down menu, you can have regular or bold. Some of them, like Arial Nova, there's 12 variations. So you've got condensed, condensed light, 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 and all these other versions. back to the top here 
So you can either look at all of the fonts, you can look at the recently used fonts, and any that have been used, I assume that's what that means, but I haven't got any listed there. And you can make some fonts favourites. Because next to, at the end of this line here, there's little hearts. And if you just click on one of these hearts, it will move that particular font into your favourites list. So if you use these a lot, they're e so much easier to find. Let me go back to the all. Now if you if you know the name of the font you're looking for, and when you've got hundreds or thousands of fonts, it'd be hard pressed to remember all their names, but as I know this one is called Western, I'm just going to start typing it, so it's W E S and we've got Western. So that is now set up for Western and I can just draw that out and just write something like Cowboy which I know is a bit bland. Let's change, change the colour so it's easier to see and I'll just change, change the size a little bit. So basically that is how you can find a font, download a font, and install a font, and how you can then use it within Affinity, Photo, and or Designer, because that will now also be available in Designer. So I'm now going to go over to Designer, and if I come to the font options, at the moment it's still set up on favourites. So if I go to all and I'll just show you that Western is in there. So you know Western is there. You don't even have to type the whole word, I've just got to W E and it will list fonts that have got W E in them. So let me make that a favourite. Let me click on there. And then when I click on the favourites list, Western is now available there. Right. Close that down. Now, obviously, you all know that any keyboard that you key that on the keyboard that you have, you know, if you press it, you will get a Y or an R or a four or a comma or a colon. But there are many symbols in some fonts. In some fonts, there's hundreds of them really um, that aren't obvious or you know available just from a key press now in the past i would have used let me drop these down a bit i would have used the character map on windows i presume there's a similar version on the mac but in the past i would have used a ca uh, character map which is part of the windows program and it displays all the different possible extra icons or glyphs as they're known that are available in any font. Now I do not know whether this is a new feature with the versions 1.6 um, or whether these this has been available for quite some time I've just never noticed it before but if you come to the view menu and this works the same in both photo and designer come down to studio and then come to glyph browser it will open up this glyph browser here if i come back to photo view studio glyph browser now because i don't know quite why but in affinity photo it automatically opens up docked to the left hand side but in my version of Affinity Designer it opens up as a floating panel so let me just resize this come on so just trying to get there we go All right 
I could dock it over this side, but I'm not going to bother. So from this Glyph browser, you can pick this font that you want to look at. So let's just have a look at Western because that's the one I've just downloaded. I've no idea if it has any glyphs. Oh, there we go. So it basically has all the upper and lowercase letters, but it also has like the dollar sign, the percent sign, and a few other sort of Latin type um, icons. So let me just do that again. So if I double click on one of these, it will install that glyph at the point of the cursor. So as you can see, there's all sorts of different glyphs that you could use. Now, if I go for a font like Arial, for example, because there are nine versions of the font, be it you know, italic and bold and what have you, and it is a, a pretty much bog standard font for Windows, there are literally hundreds of possible glyphs that you could use. So if I double click on this one here, let me just drop that down. I mean, some of these I've no idea what, like this is it's like Arabic, and there's other language options. I believe there's um, Greek, Latin, so that one's Latin. So there's loads. Not just going to let me do it. That's it. There are loads of glyphs on some fonts and just a few extra glyphs on other fonts. But it's quite a handy browser thing to have if you want an unusual symbol or glyph that you may want to use or even things like the the at symbol if you're doing a, a web address so it is handy in that way and you're not restricted to just like adding that the regular version you could add the bold version or the italic version if those versions are available again you can search using different types of um, whether you just want to look at the Hebrew um, glyphs that are available in the font that you've picked, if that, that's available, or the number forms, so that's like the percentage signs. So you could narrow down the search that way. Let's go back to all. Again, I think you can do a search down here for a particular symbol. I think you can do this by, if you know the Unicode for the symbol, um, let me go back to the character map for a minute, see whether it will let me do this one here, because if I remember rightly, if you click on the copyright symbol, the copyrights, the U code for this is U plus zero zero a nine let's see if I can get this to work you I don't know if you have to do the plus sign but I'll give it a go plus zero zero a nine and as you see it has highlighted the copyright site which is the one we was after so that is how you can find a glyph if you know the Unicode for it. So I think that's really the end of this video showing you how you can have a little bit of extra fun with fonts once you open the glyph browser. But if you want to just shut this, if it's not docked, you can just shut it by clicking on the cross and if it is docked, 
you can either undock it by just dragging it out or go back to view studio glyph browser and just click on it again to close it so i hope that's been of some help thank you for watching and goodbye